In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. This is the very first verse of the Bible. This verse has launched numerous theologians, philosophers and laymen in their search for a deeper metaphysical understanding of this universe. An individual by the name of Kenneth Copeland, whom we should not consider one of these sophisticated thinkers, writes the following. God loved us so much that he decided to build a dwelling place for us out of the very substance of his own love-filled, light-filled nature. He released the very essence of himself into this material creation. If you want to know why Kenneth Copeland is wrong about the doctrine of creation, please stay tuned for this episode of Digging Deeper. So let's have a look at Copeland's understanding of creation. Here is his argument once more. When God said, light be, he did more than ignite the Big Bang that would set the universe in motion. He released the very essence of himself into this material creation because he wanted the family he was about to create to be eternally surrounded with 100% absolute good. Some of you will immediately notice that this sounds a little bit like pantheism, the idea that creation itself is God. This is a view of the universe held by different pagan religions. It merges the natural and the supernatural into one substance and makes God and the world identical. So when Copeland says that God created out of his own substance, he certainly pushes towards a pantheistic worldview. But it would not be full-fledged pantheism yet, because pantheism does not recognize a divine being distinct from creation. Copeland's view still includes this distinction, and should therefore better be considered a form of panentheism. Whereas pantheism stands for all is God, panentheism stands for all is in God. Copeland teaches that God extended or took a part of his very essence in order to create the material world. Copeland's view would be a creation ex Deo, out of God, rather than ex nihilo, out of nothing. So what's the problem with panentheism and a creation ex Deo, you ask? One problem is that Copeland's view is a threat to divine immutability, which is God's unchanging nature. Scripture tells us that God does not change intrinsically, that is, in his essence or mind. Malachi 3, 6 states, For I, the Lord, do not change. Or Numbers 23, 19 states that God is not a man, that he should change his mind. So God does not change in any way in his essence. In the panentheistic worldview, however, the world is seen as an intrinsic property of God. Creation and God are essentially so closely connected that changes in creation will inevitably bring about changes in God himself. This makes God like a creature. God is changed by the course of nature and human individuals. That is not the God of the Bible who is independent in full providential control of this universe and absolutely sovereign. Moreover, panentheism and the creation ex Deo are a threat to God's simplicity. Please don't think that I'm using the term simplicity as in easy to understand. No, theological simplicity means that God cannot be divided into lesser parts. We do know from scripture that God is spirit. Jesus himself says so in John 4, 24. God is not like a physical creature that consists out of different interdependent parts, such as organs or limbs. In the creation ex Deo, however, God takes a part of his essence in order to form the universe. This is not possible since God is simple and therefore indivisible. And if God were divisible, it would be another threat to his immutability. Because if God is divided into lesser parts, 
he would change. And we just saw that this is unbiblical. In classical theism, which is the biblical view, God is absolute. This means that he is ontologically distinct from the universe. God and the material world are two different substances, as you can see in the diagram. There is no mixture between the two. This, however, does not mean that God is absent from his own creation. No, God constantly upholds the universe and providentially guides the unfolding of events therein. Creation is dependent on God and his spirit is present therein without mixing divine and created substances. Only classical theism can uphold God's simplicity, immutability, and many other divine attributes. If we deviate from classical Christian theism, we make God more and more like a creature, rather than the ultimate creator who is completely distinct from us and beyond us. Since Copeland is already pushing toward a divine nature of the universe, it is no wonder then that he also deifies the human race. The same happens, by the way, in New Age. The divine nature of the universe builds up to the divine nature of man. This is how Copeland goes on in his book. When God created man, he actually copied himself. God's nose was right in front of Adam's nose, his mouth was level with Adam's, his eyes, looking into Adam's eyes, seemed to be pouring into him everything God is. All his love, light, life, goodness, and mercy were being infused into this man. God was merging into Adam his very being. If you want to know why this is unbiblical hogwash, then don't forget to tune in next time when I continue our examination of Kenneth Copeland's creation beliefs. But as for now, I wish you a very blessed week. See you soon.